My name is Beth Dean and I am the Senior Clinical Pharmacy Specialist in Nutrition Support at Cook Children's Medical Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're going to discuss the use of photo protection for parental nutrition in premature infants. I would also like to introduce my colleague Katie Haggerty who is a nurse and a dietitian at our institution as well and she also assisted in the development of this program. The purpose of this two-part video series is to provide background, recommendations, and implementation steps for photo protection. Part one, this video, will provide the background and recommendations, and part two will provide a clinician knowledge gap analysis and suggested implementation steps for protection. Our disclaimers for this presentation are that Aspen and the authors understand that the full implementation of complete photo protection may not currently be feasible given current product availability. Recommendations provided in this paper serve to represent the goal to which to strive as well as to highlight the importance of product availability to achieve these practices. Aspen does not endorse any brand of products shown herein or mentioned in this presentation. In May 2021, Aspen conducted a survey to assess current practice and educational needs regarding PN photo protection for premature infants. The following findings illustrate the educational and practice gaps around PN photo protection for premature infants and the desire for practitioners to be compliant with the Aspen recommendations. In looking at the summary of Aspen photo protection survey results, when looking at current practice, the percent of respondents that are photo protecting the PN bag itself is the highest. That's about 30% of respondents. When looking at the PN tubing and filter, it's much less, about 10%. When looking at the intravenous lipid emulsion bag, syringe, about 13%, as well as the intravenous lipid emulsion tubing and filter, only 7%. Also compounding and transport, this part of the process, it has less people photo protecting during this part of the PN process. In terms of future plans, 71 to 94% of respondents plan to implement photo protection in the various aspects of the PN delivery process, with the highest amount, again, being the PN bag and tubing, and or filter at 88 to 94% of respondents. This survey demonstrates that photo protection is not, for the most part, happening, but that clinicians want to implement this process. They need recommendations, education, protocols, and products to make this happen. When looking at several of the PN components product insert information regarding photo protection, the fish oil based lipids, potassium phosphates, cysteine, selenium, as well as two chambered PN products all have the recommendation or requirement to protect from light for both stability and storage of the products. In looking at current practice, existing materials that permit photo protection include such materials as an amber overwrap or cover bags, amber sleeves for administration tubing, as well as amber administration tubing, but the tubing that is available is not microbore for use in infants. So while the ideal scenario is, to, is the ability to offer complete photo protection, materials available for photo protection in the U.S. primarily permit protection during transport and infusion. The next few slides will outline what can be done with currently available materials and products to photo protect as much as possible. Um, in terms of these particular materials, the ones that I am familiar with and have used for, at our institution for uh, nearly 20 years are the amber cover bags as well as the amber administration tubing. When looking at the implementation of PN photo protection with the currently available equipment, 
The first process I'd like to discuss is the labeling of the PN final container or the intravenous lipid emulsion container and amber covering bags for each. The potential for error or harm with this process is the potential for a wrong patient label on an amber bag in such that the labels do not match during the pharmacy dispensing or packaging. The proposed solution for this is to consider cutting a window in the amber cover bag so that the label on the PN container or the intravenous lipid emulsion container can be visualized. Taping the bag around the label to avoid light exposure between the amber bag and the PN container or intravenous lipid emulsion container. This step will avoid labeling both the PN and intravenous lipid emulsion container and the cover bag as well. The next process in the implementation of PM photo protection would be the process of removing the amber cover bag to review or verify the PN or intravenous lipid emulsion labels prior to administration. The potential for error or harm with this is the potential for an incorrect amber cover bag to be replaced on a PN or intravenous lipid emulsion container after the nurse verifies the label such that another patient's PN or intravenous lipid emulsion amber bag or amber bag from a previous day, if not discarded, may be placed over that patient's product for that day. The proposed solution would be consider cutting a window in the amber bag as noted above. At our institution, we have always labeled the PN or lipid bag itself with no la label on the amber bag and the nurse lifts up to see the label we realize that lifting the amber bag to look at the label exposes the PN or intravenous lipid emulsion to light, breaching the photo protection, but this is a very brief occurrence. That having no label on the outside of the bag also is a little extra in terms of HIPAA with no um, direct information on the patient directly at the bedside as well. This is an example of a photo protection bag that is available from Medipack. Uh, this is the one that we have used for many years as well. The next process is the covering of the PN container and intravenous lipid emulsion container with amber bags during administration. The potential for error or harm with this process is the inability to visualize the PN or intravenous lipid emulsion to inspect for particulates or cracked emulsion. This would allow the potential to administer unsafe PN admixture or intravenous lipid emulsion resulting in patient harm. There is no proposed solution for this problem. The process of covering of the PN and intravenous lipid emulsion administration tubing during administration with an amber sleeve or other material such as aluminum foil if amber tubing is not readily available or is not compatible with the infusion pump. The potential for error or harm with this process is the inability to visualize the PN or intravenous lipid emulsion to inspect for particulates or cracked emulsion. The use of aluminum foil may not provide complete photo protection due to gaps or slits in the covering, resulting in intense light exposure and compromise the integrity of the PN or intravenous lipid emulsion. The potential to administer unsafe PN admixture or intravenous lipid emulsion may result in patient harm. The proposed solution is to consider using only the amber sleeve and avoiding those materials that may increase the temperature of the PN or the intravenous lipid emulsion in administration tubing. Again, some of the products that are available for tubing protection are the Alaris infusion set with an inline filter that is an amber colored tubing that we have used at our institution for many years as well as a product where you can actually uh, a sleeve to cover the tubing uh, that is available from Pharma Systems. These next few slides will look at the considerations for implementation of complete photo protection 
In these tables, we'll walk through these considerations in each phase of the PN use process to be able to achieve this. So the first step is in our compounding process. And what would be required here is that all products or at a minimum, at least the amino acids and in intravenous lipid emulsion be in amber packaging, amber tubing, manifold syringes, and final containers would be needed, as well as amber LED lighting or light filter in the hood or sterile compounding area. The logistical challenges or drawbacks of this is the inability to adequately see and inspect products through the amber bags, syringes, or tubing, and the risk of the inability to visualize these particulates as well as precipitation. The industry challenges are that it will take some time before the amber packaging, tubing, and filters, as well as these final containers do become available. They, may be, they must be developed, product stability tested, and approved by the FDA. But will manufacturers invest in this for such a small number of patients that would need or benefit from this? As for amber LED lighting in our hoods, it would be helpful for compounding, but need other products also light protective for optimum photo protection. Our next step in our PN handling is our storage and transportation step. And what would be required here is PN admixtures and amber final containers, intravenous lipid emulsions packaged in amber bags or amber syringes. Again, the logistical challenges and drawbacks are the difficulty to, in inspecting these admixtures or intravenous lipid emulsions and the risk of not visualizing the particulates, precipitates, or cracked emulsions. The industry challenges are as we said on the previous slide. During the administration step, our PN admixtures should again be in amber final containers as well as the intravenous lipid emulsions packaged in amber bags. Amber DEHP free administration tubing and inline filters compatible with the infusion pump are also required. The logistical challenges and drawbacks of this are that the PN admixtures in amber final containers and intravenous lipid emulsions packaged in amber bags or amber syringes with the amber administration tubing and inline filters compatible with the infusion pump. Again, the industry challenges are as we stated above. In conclusion, photo protection of PN for premature infants is definitely needed. Currently available equipment is limited, but partial protection can be achieved as we have done in our neonatal intensive care unit for many years. Reviewing considerations for total photo protection is important as well as a need to further innovate and develop products to optimally achieve complete photo protection. I would like to refer you to the paper that is published in Nutrition and Clinical Practice entitled The Recommendations for Photo Protection of Parental Nutrition for Premature Infants. This program has been brought to you by Aspen as well as being supported by Fresenius Copy as well. Thank you for their support.